Hello and welcome back. Uh, in this exercise, we're going to be looking at bivariate distributions and covariance, also coefficient of correlation. So basically here we're looking at a, a probability distribution that arises when we consider two random variables uh, simultaneously. So in this case, we're looking at two uh, discrete distributions, uh, one on meal price and one on meal quality. Uh, so basically what we have, we've looked at uh, 100 restaurants, oops, 100 restaurants, <clears throat> and we've classified uh, these 100 restaurants uh, based on three price levels. So a one is an inexpensive restaurant, three is an expensive restaurant, and then we rated the quality of meal on a scale of one to three as well. So one is not very good, uh, two is good, three is excellent. So we have here our two uh, discrete uh, variables, and we're looking at how these two variables uh, behave when they're combined uh, to a bivariate distribution. So I'm going to do this problem uh, probably in, I'd say, three videos, because uh, we're going to be going through a lot of different things, a lot of different aspects of uh, this type of problem, which probably covers uh, anything that you might be asked uh, if you're, you know, having to write an exam problem or something like this. So I'll, I'll go through part A in this video where we will develop the prob the bivariate probability distribution, uh, and then I'll do another video for part B and C, and another video for D, E, and F, uh, or some combination like this. We'll see how it goes uh, as we progress through. So for the first part, uh, this will actually be the, the quickest and easiest part, developing the bivariate probability distribution. So what I've done here, I've sort of cheated a little bit and I've created another table for myself to, uh, to work with. All that we need to do here is look at uh, all of the relative frequencies of each combination uh, of possible response. So for example, uh, what is the probability that a randomly selected restaurant uh, is both poor in quality and inexpensive? So here we're looking at, well, of those 100 restaurants that we've surveyed, I have seven restaurants uh, are both poor quality and inexpensive. So as a, as a probability, here we're looking at the probability that it is a one and a one, so it's poor, uh, and inexpensive, poor quality and inexpensive. And so that's seven out of 100. And so that gives us a value here of 0 0.07. And so we go through and we need to calculate all of those probabilities uh, for each possible combination of values. So again, if we look at what's the frequency of observations uh, for a restaurant that is uh, poor quality uh, and um, moderately expensive, so kind of the medium price range. So this is going to be, well, I have poor quality and medium price, so this is going to be 9 out of 100, so this is 0 0.09. So I can go through all of the, the cells. I'm going to go through the interior 9 cells first, and then we'll do the totals on the side. So just moving along and filling in in the same, oops, in the same way. So I have this one. My pen always acts funny when I get towards the bottom of the screen. So 0.04. So 4% of those restaurants are considered uh, expensive, um, but poor quality. Moving on here, I would have three out of 100. So 3% of them are considered inexpensive, but medium quality. Uh, moving on, this is 0.24. So I'm looking at this value divided by divided by the total number of restaurants. The next one, 23 divided by 100. So this is 23 over 100. That is the restaurants that are considered expensive, uh, but medium quality of food. Moving on up to here now, this is going to be the inexpensive, high quality meal, 0 0.05. Here we have the moderately expensive, but good quality food, 0 0.07. And finally, here we have the very expensive, high quality food, 0 0.18. So I've kept these numbers simple. 
by having a total of 100 observations that makes all of these calculations uh, quite simple to, to perform. You can do them uh, in your head. So there we have all of the combinations of these different discrete variables. But uh, what we're going to be needing for parts B and C uh, are going to be also treating these variables as if they are two separate uh, discrete variables. So over here, in this cell over here, this is going to be uh, the probability that a randomly selected restaurant uh, falls into that low price category. So here again, I'm going to have, uh, that's 15 out of 100 restaurants. So 15 out of 100 restaurants, that's going to be 0.15. And as I go down now, I'll look here at the 40. So what is the chance that a randomly selected restaurant falls into the medium, uh, the medium price category? That's going to be 40 out of 100, so 0.4. And finally, the last one uh, for the expensive or the high price restaurant, that's 0.45. So these ones here are, are just those frequencies uh, across meal price. So those are those relative frequencies uh, across our Y variable, just looking at the price. Then we also need those frequencies uh, looking at just meal quality. So a randomly selected restaurant, what's the probability that it falls into the poor quality? So that's going to be, of those 100 restaurants, uh, 20 of them were rated uh, or were found to be of poor quality. So this is just going to be 0 0.20. Similarly, of those 100 restaurants, 50 of them were found to be of medium quality. So here, this is going to be 0 0.50. And again, of those 100, 30 of them were found to be of high quality. So that's this 0 0.30. And the total here, this satisfies again. If we look at the criteria uh, for discrete probability distributions, all of our probabilities are uh, non-negative, zero or greater, and they sum to one. And in this case, it should sum to one if we're adding down the relative frequencies for meal price. Uh, let me just scroll down a bit here. And also they'll sum to one if we add across those frequencies uh, on meal quality. So here I'm just going to put in a notation. This is total. This is f of x. Those are those frequencies uh, across meal quality. And whichever way we add, uh, these all add to one. So this satisfies our criteria for uh, discrete probability distributions. Okay. So this is now sort of the base work, and we're going to need this uh, binomial distribution. Uh, to answer uh, most of the next questions, uh, or at least uh, we'll need some of these uh, binomials, uh, sorry, these discrete probability distributions for parts B and C, and, and uh, we'll go from there. So I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I'm going to start fresh, uh, start a fresh video with a bit of a clean page here, except I'm going to keep the information that we need uh, to move forward. And I'll start another video then for part B and C. Okay, thanks for watching. See you again soon, I hope.